To all my SpaceX fans out there, we're going to have a very interesting week. Welcome back to another episode of Tech TLDR. In today's SpaceX news update, we're going to be talking about the SN10 static fire, as well as the upcoming launch we may see by the end of the week. Now, that news is from Elon Musk himself. We're also going to be talking about the landing pad images from Perseverance, as well as a few other stories at the end. So if you want to know anything, stick through the episode. Also, be sure to click the like button. It helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. But let's get into why you clicked on the video, which is the SN10. So Mary Boca Chica Gal, as we all know on Twitter, she released this on Twitter about the road closers in the area. I talked about this in a previous episode, how Cameron County had closed roads and beaches from t- today, Monday, February 22nd, until Wednesday, February 24th. Make sure nobody is in the area because SpaceX wants to do static fire tests for the SN10. I think that we will see it today. There was activity actually yesterday for the SN10. We can see here from area again, an aft flap had been deployed. Also, it was venting. So they are getting ready to do something with this. I think they're just getting everything in set place for today to do the actual static fire. Now, after she tweeted this, which makes things really interesting for everybody following when this is going to launch, Elon Musk comes back with a tweet saying, good chance of flying this week. If that's not enough information for you, I don't know what is. The CEO, the owner himself, is saying that there's a very good chance of this flying this week. Let's backtrack a little bit. I talked about some of my previous episodes as well. The FAA is no longer investigating about the SN9 or the SN8, those crashes. That is all set. They were investigating to make sure that the crash from the Starships could not harm anybody in the area. There was no chance of anybody getting hurt. And they proved that that was correct. Nobody could have been hurt from the testing they were doing. There's no investigations going on. So as long as the FAA gives them the clearance of the day they want to do it to actually have air clearance to put something in the sky, there's nothing holding them back in terms of legal reasons. They're cleared. Nothing about the Starship is considered dangerous at this point by the FAA. Once the SN15 rolls out, however, we may have to see changes because, as I've talked about, there's going to be changes with the SN15 and beyond. So that we still have to wait to see if anything goes wrong with those, what the FAA has to say, because it is going to be a change to the system itself. There's one more thing we have to talk about, though, regarding the SN10 doing a possible launch and landing this week. Mary, again, for the third time this episode, tweeted a picture of them finishing the concrete of the landing pad for the SN10. And the question right now is, how long does it take for this concrete to cure, right? How long until this is solidified that you can actually land something on it? There's been multiple people talking, giving different answers. So let me give you my insights. And let me know in the comments what you think about how long it'll take. But let me just explain. So they're using a company called Cemex. This company boasts about having really quick drying times for their concrete. The problem is, though, is that they've been doing this over a span of few days. So the little last bit that they've done is the only part that really I would be concerned about. Some people are saying that it takes up to a month for concrete to cure. I wouldn't say that's necessarily true because you have to factor in things like weather, humidity. The, the concrete is not it's not just a set and forget in terms of what well, is, <laughs> never mind. But it's not something that it's just going to have an automatic time where it yep, okay, it's set. Yep. It doesn't work like that. Concrete works in a much more natural way where if there's weather, inclement weather which they've had, that could delay it cold temperatures, warm temperatures, again, humidity, there's multiple problems that could happen. But the good news is that this company has talked that they have about 80% strength in this concrete within four days of it being laid down, meaning that by the end of this week, it'll be at at least 80% strength. I would say that that would be enough for SpaceX to land this on. Reason being is that at 80%, it's not a puddle of mud. It's not like they just put it down. It still has moisture within it, but it's hard enough that SpaceX, I don't think they're concerned about the integrity of this concrete. They know that most likely this isn't going to be a permanent thing. There's going to be multiple crashes. There's going to be more Starship testings and failures. I don't think they're too concerned about that difference. They're more on a time crunch getting these Starships flying. The SN11 is already pretty much ready to come out of the high bay. So they want to get things moving. That, again, that's half opinion, half fact. So like I said, let me know in the comments what you guys think. If you think I'm an idiot, if you think I'm correct, whatever you want to say, let me know in the comments. Quick image coming from NASA Perseverance. Look how crisp this is. Look how I literally feel like I'm a mechanic working on this thing right now. Although it's not the scenic vista of Mars canyons that looks like Arizona, I just love the detail in this. There's a lot of cool photos coming from this. If you guys haven't checked that out already, I highly recommend you do. It's really cool. It just really gets me excited for the images that can come soon within the next few weeks to months, what this thing is going to start pumping out. 
all I can really fathom at this point right now and picture in my mind is like, imagine if this thing came across like a fossil, like literally some sort of print and a 4K image of that. I know it's really far fetched and most likely won't happen, but it's something to hope for. Fingers crossed. Another story I want to talk about coming from spaceflightnow.com. The Antares rocket launched cargo up to the ISS. Now, this carried about 8,400 pounds of cargo. A rocket named Cygnus, I believe I pronounced that right, from Northrop Grumman. Those words are such tongue twisters for me. They always have been. I don't know what it is about that company. It's a single-use craft that's going to be deployed up into the ISS, bringing along with it packaging and unpressurized equipment to assist in the deployment of several CubeSats along with other cargo. Once it is done, it's just going to be used as a store of trash, which will then be sent back down to the earth. It's not the most interesting thing, but it is something to just keep an eye on. Northrop Grumman doing more activity. Any sort of activity is interesting, in my opinion. It just helps us get a bigger space industry, which is the final story I want to talk about, which is really, I would say, inspiring. $178 billion flows into space investments over the past decade. From Investopedia.com of all sites, which it has nothing to do with space, but this is more or less to give you guys an idea of what could really happen in the next decade or two in terms of the growth of this industry. So you can see on this chart here by Space Capital, you look at 11, 2012, 2013, there's nothing. And as of 2014, it just booms. Once SpaceX was able to start landing those boosters effectively, right around that time, a little, a little before but once it was showing proof of concept, I think that's when we really see just a boom in this industry and people are realizing, hey, this no longer has to be as expensive as it once was. This can be a commercial project. Investors come into the space. They want to get their hands in those pockets. They want to see it. And of course, that's a good thing for us. Like we want this industry to grow as much as it is cool to think about going to Mars and stuff. There needs to be a funding behind it. The big takeaway from this article was that Morgan Stanley Banking sees that global space industry is generating a revenue of $1 trillion by 2040. Satellite broadband is expected to represent 50 of that growth. Satellite broadband, aka Starlink, I mean, there's not many competitors right now that I can think of of Starlink that will probably succeed. Comcast, no. Verizon, eh. Dish, eh. I think, I think we all know who the winner will most likely be in the satellite broadband system. And although companies like SpaceX and Blue Origin are not currently on the stock market, for any of you guys who are into investing, there are a lot of different ETFs, index funds, little companies popping up on the stock market. I would highly recommend checking out if it's something you're interested in and you have the spare funds to do so. I mean, like from this article saying, space is literally the next frontier. It's, it's inevitable. We, as a human race, we have to expand. We have to go on. We have to see what else is out there. What the direction do we go? We can go to the center of the Earth, sure. We can do that, see what's in there. Or we can go outward and explore beyond. I think it's a good investment. I'm not an investment advisor, but I personally will be investing in other companies. And maybe I'll talk about it on this show. We'll see. But either way, you guys, if you like this content, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comments what you think about the Perseverance pictures, about SpaceX landings. Do you like it? Do you hate it? What do you want to know? What don't you want to know? Anyways, be sure to have a good one, guys.